Hey, it's me again, and in this video, we're going to talk about the fifth of five ways a married person leaves their estate. I'm Paul Rabelais. I'm an estate planning attorney. I help our clients get and keep their legal affairs in order. This is the fifth of a five-part series, and I saved this, this one for last because this one really only affects the, the Louisiana folks out there. You know, all those folks who, like me, you know, like our, our seafood gumbo, our crawfish etouffee, our crawfish, our, uh, crawfish balls. So, but, uh, you know, Louisiana has some unique laws, and so this one pertains to Louisiana. But, hey, if you're not in Louisiana, feel free to listen in, and you'll learn something new. Maybe. Okay, so in the, in the previous four, it was all about how you leave ownership to your spouse, how you leave things in trust for your spouse with spouse as the trustee, how you leave things in trust for your spouse with your spouse not as the sole trustee, and then how you leave, may leave certain things not to your spouse. And in this fifth video, it's, it's about how a married person leaves what's called usufruct to their spouse. Um, so usufruct is a Louisiana only word. When we talk about whether people do that through their will or through their trust, typically that's done through a will. It's, you know, a usufruct is not really a common trust term. So when people do leave usufruct to their, to their spouse, they do it typically through their last will and testament, which means that when they die, families got to go through the probate stuff to get the assets out of the name of the person who died and, and retitle that into the usufruct for, for the surviving spouse. So hope I haven't confused you so far. I'm going to try to keep it simple. All right, so you know when someone does leave their spouse usufruct, their, their will usually says something like, I leave the usufruct of my estate or the usufruct of my home or particular assets. I leave the usufruct of my estate to my spouse. And then it, it'll typically say a few, few other things. It might say, well, it, it will typically state the term of the usufruct. It might say, my spouse's usufruct shall last for my spouse's lifetime. It might say, uh, my spouse's usufruct will last until my spouse dies or remarries, whichever comes first. And then it might say, um, I give my spouse or I give the usufructuary, that's what the spouse is, the person who has the usufruct is called the usufructuary. The will might say, I give the usufructuary the power to dispose of non-consumables. What that does is, for example, after the person who wrote the will dies, if their spouse wants to sell an asset that they have usufruct of, like the home, if they have this power to dispose of non-consumables, they can sell the house without getting the consent of what's called the naked owners. And then the will might say, I waive all the bond requirements for the usufructuary. So, so whenever someone has a will and they leave their spouse usufruct, they will or should always designate who the naked owners are. So this surviving spouse slash usufructuary has certain rights, but also has certain obligations to the eventual owners of the estate or owners of the asset, the naked owners, which are oftentimes the children of the person who granted their spouse usufruct. All right, I, I could go on for hours about usufruct, and I did go on quite a bit in the chapter about usufruct in my book called Estate Planning in Louisiana. Oh, by the way, if you want to get it on Amazon, it's 19, 1995. Um, so feel free to check that out. So why, why a crazy word like usufruct? I think it's you know, derived from a Latin origin, meaning um, when you say I leave the usufruct of my estate to my spouse, I guess in English terms, you're saying something like, um, I leave the use and the fruits of my estate to my surviving spouse. So um, what does that mean? What are the, what are the rights of the usufructuary? Well, it, it kind of depends on the type of asset that the usufructuary has the usufruct of. For example, if a usufructuary has the usufruct of what's called a consumable item like cash or bank accounts, Let's say husband died, he left his wife the usufruct of $100,000 that's in the bank. What it means now that she has the usufruct of a consumable item, it, it means it's hers, but at the and she can do what she wants to with it, but at the end of the usufruct, maybe when she dies, maybe when she remarries, she or her estate owes the naked owners the amount that she has the usufruct of. So 
When she dies, her estate owes his naked owners that $100,000, even if she spent it all. So we get a lot of questions about what if the usufructuary spends all the money? And then the usufructuary's rights differ if the usufructuary has a usufruct of something called a non-consumable, like real estate, like shares of stock. So if the husband leaves his wife the usufruct of a home and she never sells it, or if he leaves her the usufruct of shares of stock and she never sells them, then when she dies, even though those assets may have increased or decreased in value after the husband died, the naked owners just get that asset when that surviving spouse dies. And then there's the little bit more complicated scenario when a uh, married person leaves their surviving spouse the usufruct of a non-consumable and then during the usufruct, the usufructuary sells the asset that they have the usufruct of. They're cons converting an asset uh, from a non-consumable to a consumable. Not going to get into all that. It's going to confuse you too much, but it's all in the book. And quite frankly, it's all in other videos that I've made on YouTube. But in general, it's, it's kind of like, and I always kind of assume the husband dies first, but I know that's not always the case. It's like a husband saying, I'm going to let my wife use my assets. And then when my wife dies or dies or remarries, whichever occurs first, however the husband may have stipulated it, then I want those assets to revert back to the naked owners. Uh, so similar in, 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 uh, similar to the, I leave my assets in trust for my spouse and my spouse, if my spouse needs them for my spouse's needs, they can use them. And then when my spouse dies, um, the assets revert back to, to my heirs. Not exactly the same, but similar. From a tax standpoint uh, and from a Medicaid standpoint, um, the assets that you leave your spouse will not get another step up in basis when your surviving spouse dies, at least not typically, um, because those assets are not gonna be included in the estate for estate tax purposes um, up for the surviving spouse. But then for Medicaid purposes, it's really kind of a mess. Um, if you leave the usufruct of assets to your spouse and your spouse goes into a nursing home, depending upon whether those are consumables or non-consumables, they're going to be an asset that um, is going to prevent the surviving spouse from, from being eligible for Medicaid without you know, sp you know, um, spending all those assets down. So a usufruct, a lot of people mistakenly believe that if mom has usufruct of a piece of land, she doesn't really own it. And so um, it's protected from the nursing home and they're kind of right that she doesn't own it. She just has these usufructuary rights, but those usufructuary rights have value. And since those usufructuary rights have value, then that value has to be sold or consumed uh, prior to mom being eligible for Medicaid if she goes into a nursing home. So another area. Okay, so in summary here, that's the fifth of five ways uh, to leave your estate when you pass away. If you're a married person in usufruct and also designating naked owners, a lot of, lot of law on that that uh, you can find from other videos and other sources. So in summary, I'm glad this is the fifth of five videos. I'm ready to move on to something else. In fact, I'm happy to hear your suggestions, but there's five ways a married person typically leaves either their entire estate or certain parts of their estate. They either leave their spouse ownership or they leave assets in trust with their spouse as the trustee or they leave their assets in trust with their spouse, not the sole trustee. Sometimes married people leave assets not to their spouse, but to others. And then in Louisiana, we have this fifth, fifth option where a married person uh, can, and sometimes does, through their will, leave their spouse the usufruct of their, of, of their estate or assets in their estate, and they designate you know, naked owners as well. So I hope that helps. Which of those five makes most sense to you? Love to, love to see some comments you know, down below in the comments section. Um, and then make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell that goes alongside it. Hit the thumbs up button if you like it. And, and YouTube will do its thing to maybe make my videos appear more um, on your screen 
so that we can keep you educated on these topics. So um, give us give us your thoughts, give us your comments, and give us your likes and give us your subscriptions. Yeah, all that. Okay, very good. Y'all have a great day. Take care.